Hello, everyone, and welcome to the MathDBase.com Anacast series. I'm your host, John Kisyadu. In this installment in the Developmental Mathematics series, I will discuss Ratios, Proportions, Rates, and Variations, Part 3, Rates 1. A rate expresses an amount of something in relation to one of something else. Rates are always spoken of in terms of pairs of units, which are arranged as a ratio. Speed in miles per hour or kilometers per second, and price of meat in dollars per pound or per kilogram, or the amount of water leaking from a tank in gallons or liters per second. Speed, price, and leaking represent rates. Miles, hours, seconds, pounds, kilograms, and dollars represent the units used to express those rates. Written in fraction form, a speed of 65 miles per hour would be 65 miles over one hour, and the cost of a T-bone steak in a supermarket might be $12.95 per pound, or $12.95 over one pound. As with any ratio or fraction, the value of a rate is not changed if both the numerator and denominator are multiplied or divided by the same quantity, but the basic rate is always a fraction in lowest terms. At 65 miles per hour, how far will you travel in 3 hours? The distance covered in 3 hours at 65 miles per hour is 65 miles times 3 divided by 1 hour times 3, or 195 miles in 3 hours. A municipal water tank leaks 27 gallons of water each hour. How much water leaks out each minute, and how much in 20 minutes? We first have to write the given rate of water leakage as a fraction, and then calculate an equivalent fraction in terms of minutes. Since one hour is 60 minutes, one minute is 1 60th of an hour. Using the relationship between hours and minutes, 27 gallons per hour is equal to 27 gallons per 60 minutes. Dividing top and bottom by 60 to get a rate in minutes, we have 27 gallons divided by 60 over 60 minutes divided by 60. So we have 27 over 60 gallons in the numerator, and the 60s cancel in the denominator, giving us one minute. We can reduce the numerator to 9 over 20 gallons, dividing both terms by 3, then convert to decimal form by multiplying both terms by 5 to get 45 over 100 gallons per minute, or 0.45 gallons per minute. To find the amount of water that leaks in 20 minutes, we can either divide the initial rate by 3, since 20 minutes is equal to one third of an hour, to get 9 gallons in 20 minutes, or we can just look at the reduced fraction in the calculation of the amount of water leaked per minute. A conversion factor is a multiplier used to rewrite a quantity expressed in units of one kind as an equivalent value expressed in other units. Units can only be converted to units of the same type, length to length, as in inches to centimeters, weight as in kilograms to tons, and currency to currency, as in dollars to yen, etc. Though some conversion factors are fixed and never change, such as those representing lengths, weights, and times, others fluctuate on a daily, hour, or even minute-to-minute -minute or second-to-second -second basis, such as exchange rates used to calculate equivalencies in U.S. and foreign currencies. Typically in a conversion of units problem, we multiply the quantity given in certain units by a conversion factor in such a way that the given units cancel and we are left with the equivalent quantity expressed in the other units. For example, to express 7 miles in terms of feet, we can make use of the fact that there are 5,280 feet per mile, which is the conversion factor, and write 7 miles times 5,280 feet per mile. The miles cancel leaving feet in the numerator, then we multiply 7 by 5,280 to get 36,960 feet. To express 0.3 ounces in terms of pounds, we can use the conversion factor 1 pound per 16 ounces. Multiplying, we get 0.3 ounces times 1 pound per 16 ounces. The ounces cancel, leaving only pounds in the numerator, and the product of 0.3 and 1 16th, which is equivalent to dividing 0.3 by 16, gives us 0.01875 pounds. Internationally, there are two primary systems of measurement in common use for measuring weights and lengths. In most countries of the world, the SI, International System or Metric System, using meters for measurements of length and kilograms for measurements of weight is used. In the United States and Great Britain, for the most part, the American British system is used, with feet and miles for measurements of length or distance, and pounds and tons for measurements of weight. 
In terms of weight in the American British system, we have the relationship one pound equals 16 ounces. From that we can derive two conversion factors, one pound per 16 ounces and 16 ounces per pound. Going from the metric system to the American British system, one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. From that we can derive the two conversion factors, one kilogram per 2.2 pounds and 2.2 pounds per kilogram. In terms of length or distance, in the American British system, one foot is equal to 12 inches. The two derived conversion factors are one foot per 12 inches and 12 inches per foot. Going from the American British system to the metric system, one mile is equal to 1.6 kilometers and the two derived conversion factors are 1 mile per 1.6 kilometers and 1.6 kilometers per mile. Conversion factors should be arranged so that the units asked for in the problem are placed in the numerator and all others cancel. Sometimes more than one conversion factor is needed to solve a problem. For example, let's calculate the approximate number of seconds in one year and in 30 years. There are approximately 365 and a quarter days in one year. We will use the 365 and a quarter days per year conversion factor instead of the one year per 365 and a quarter days so that the year unit will be in the denominator and will cancel. Continuing in the same way by multiplying in turn by 24 hours per day, 60 minutes per hour, and 60 seconds per minute, all of the units cancel except for seconds. Finding the product, we have 365 and a quarter times 24 times 60 times 60 which gives us approximately 31,557,600 seconds in a year. This value is approximate since the number of days in a year is not exactly 365 and a quarter. In 30 years, there are 30 times 31,557,600 seconds, which is 946,728,000 seconds, or nearly 1 billion seconds. Given that 1,000 millimeters equals 1 meter, that 1,000 meters equals 1 kilometer, and that a sheet of paper is approximately one-tenth of a millimeter thick, how many sheets would it take to build a stack that is one mile high? We will multiply the conversion factor one sheet per one-tenth of a millimeter by 1,000 millimeters per meter by 1,000 meters per kilometer by 1.6 kilometers per mile. All of the units will cancel except sheets per mile, giving us 16 million sheets per mile. Since there are 500 sheets in a ream of paper, there would be 32,000 reams in a stack one mile high. A formula is an expression that gives the mathematical relationship between two or more quantities. Speed is a commonly used rate that can be expressed using the formula speed equal to distance divided by time, and abbreviated as s equals d over t. Units used to express speed are miles per hour, kilometers per hour, and miles per second, among others. Speed can be written as a proportion, rearranged, and the formula can have three different looking but equivalent forms. S over 1 equals D over T, D equals S times T, and T equals D over S. Given that the distance between the Earth and the Sun is about 93 million miles, and that light travels 186,000 miles per second, how long does it take sunlight to reach Earth? Since how long is a measure of time, we should use the last form of the speed-distance-time formula. Time is equal to distance over speed. Substituting the numbers into the formula, 93 million miles over 186,000 miles per second, we have 93 million divided by 186,000, or 500. The miles units cancel, leaving only seconds, and we have 500 seconds. Converting the result to minutes using the fact that 1 minute equals 60 seconds, written in ratio form, we have 500 seconds times 1 minute per 60 seconds, which equals 25 over 3 minutes, or 8 and a third minutes. Since 1 third of a minute is equal to 20 seconds, sunlight would take about 8 minutes and 20 seconds to reach Earth. That the units work out to be correct provides a useful, though not infallible, check that the correct formula is being used. In this example, the units had the form miles over miles per second, which is a complex fraction that simplifies to second. As a last example, during a thunderstorm, Fred heard a clap of thunder nine seconds after he saw a flash of lightning. Given that sound travels at about 1,100 feet per second in air, how far was Fred from the lightning? Using the speed-distance-time formula arranged to solve for distance, distance equals speed times time, substituting 
1,100 feet per second times 9 seconds is equal to 9,900 feet.